Hello, I'm Simon Christie and welcome to another massive episode of Four Wheel Drive TV. Let's get stuck straight into it. Tread lightly, keep it safe, play hard. Hi folks, I'm Andy from the NissanPatrol.com.au forum. We're up here at Love Day 4x4 Adventures for our Easter forum meetup. We've had this plan for about probably two years now and we're pretty excited to get up here. There's 15 cars and roughly 20 something people have an absolute ball with our kids and wives and whatnot. We've been in now for roughly four days. We've done the three hill climbs and the last one's quite difficult. done the mud bath at the front of the Love Day Tavern. Had a massive cook up the other night with 17 people and all the different roasts and veggies and have an absolute blast. Plenty of fun to be had by everyone here. We've got steep sand dunes, rocky climbs, mud bars, and great touring tracks to see this great part of South Australia. We've got 13 GU patrols, a couple of nice GQ patrols, and unfortunately two land cruisers, which are currently broken. We've got all different types of vehicles here, some highly modified with big lifts and big tyres to more touring type vehicles. Everyone get out and about and learn a lot and experience all different types of terrain. It's great to meet up with a lot of the members you've been talking to on the forum for many, many years and it's great to put some faces to names. So I'm looking forward to meeting a lot more people at the Queensland meet up this October. It's Easter Sunday here at Love Day and Tony's put on a bit of a treat for the kids, done a bit of an Easter hunt with all the vehicles and whatnot. Is it worth saving? Is it worth trying? Is it worth making it into something you can say? Is it worth crying? Is it worth contriving? The 
forum's a great way to make new friends, get amongst it, so we're looking forward to more trips coming up soon. Please jump on the forum, missimatrial.com.au, and find out what's happening around your part of the world. I'd like to thank all the forum members who have come up. It's been a long time coming. We've had an absolute blast. Look forward to it again. So I'm Andy from nissanpatrol.com.au. Thanks for watching our Easter forum meetup at Love Day 4 Before Adventures. And thanks to Tony for having us. And thanks to all the members who have joined us. Hope to see you all next time. Well, here we are, viewers, at Hectic Car Audio in Brunswick. I'm with the owner, Ray Shea. Now, Ray, you've done a kick-butt job on the 40 Series. Tell me Thank how much you. work has gone into the dashboard. Well, there's easy about two weeks worth of solid work in it, from preparing it, fiberglassing it, and vacuum forming the whole the dashboard. Easy, I'd say, two weeks. Now, Ray, you and I spent quite a bit of time discussing the layout of the vehicle. What went into it from there? Well, after that, we gave it to our custom bloke, Grant, and he drew it out on a piece of paper and uh, measured up the car and from what we spoke about, what actually can go on the car, what's possible to get done. And then it went to the woodwork room, really, and we tried out three, four different setups until we got the right one that met your requirements and the car's requirements. Now, I've got a unique vehicle, I wanted a unique dashboard, and you've certainly come up with a great solution. Is that why most people come for a custom dashboard? The majority of our customers come for a custom install as to a custom dashboard, but if all fall under the same category, as in custom work, fiberglass, MDF, and perspex, and what have you, most people do want a unique, personalised setup, whether it be dash or boot, but most of them would definitely come in for that. Now I really like it how you've covered the colour of the vehicle on the dashboard as well. You wanted to keep the theme going, the green and black theme. A suggestion from you guys making the similar side from left to right of the dashboard to come up with the... Mirror image? Yes. Well it had to be done, yeah. As far as custom work is concerned it still has to look practical and it has to look not too futuristic and what have you. It has to be practical to use and when you get in the car you have to appreciate the work that's done to it and it's got to complement with the car as well, you know. And it's also got to be functional, so I can see Absolutely. all the gauges, it all works. Yeah, you definitely can do that. Well, Ray, thank you very much for the work you've done thank on the you. Ford. It looks absolutely honor. awesome. Thank and you. the vehicle this weekend will be on display at the National 4x4 show. 40,000 visitors are going to see it, so I'm really proud of the work you've done. Thanks, Ray. Thank you. Finally, the driving light you've always wanted is here, boasting a class-leading free-form reflector and a super-tough polycarbonate lens and ABS housing. The all-new Nava Ultimate 225 is a revolutionary driving light, available in halogen, halogen blue and HID, in both spread and pencil beams, and supplied complete with a plug-and-play wiring harness and polycarbonate lens protectors. These Aussie Outback Tough Lights outshine the competition. Visit nava.com.au for more information and make the switch to the brightest lights in town. If you drive a four-wheel drive with or without a dual battery kit, then it's time to upgrade. Modern vehicles and modern battery technologies require smart electronics, and the Piranha Off-Road Products DBE140 Dual Battery Controller has all the smart grunt you will need packed into an affordable and tiny package. Priced at just $170, the Piranha DBE140 is the smart choice in dual battery management. For more information on how you can stay charged, visit piranhaoffroad.com.au. I'm Chris Weston, off-road racer and owner of Off-Road Rush, and I wouldn't race on anything else than my Mickey Thompson tyres. I trust my Mickey Thompson's a high speed. They can handle wet or dry without any trouble. And that means I can keep racing while the competitors stop to change tyres. Mickey Thompson? No wonder they call them legendary. Call 1300 Mickey for your nearest dealer. Right, winching techniques. The simplest way to operate your winch is a single line pull, which means pretty much you hook your winch cable on your own vehicle onto a tree trunk protector or some other fixed object, and you winch yourself up the hill, which is pretty common sense. Unfortunately, sometimes it doesn't always work, so we've actually had to get vehicles up the hill, turn them around, 
and then to stop them from going down the hill and crashing into the car that they're trying to winch, you've actually got to attach it to something. Now a really great way to do this is to put your bull bar up against a tree. Unfortunately that wasn't really easy to do in many of the cases, so we've actually had to chain the back of the car via a tree trunk protector to a tree or to another couple of cars to stop them from moving. We've had a whole host of different ways of using and operating winches, but I think the really important thing to understand with this whole winching thing is, a winch isn't a toy, it's a very powerful tool and you do need to be careful how you use it. Now although we've had no significant stuff ups today, obviously things like dampeners, using appropriate shackles and appropriate rated recovery equipment, using the right set of towing points. Now we had one interesting little situation today in one of the Toyotas where the actual recovery point virtually fell off the car. Now mind you, it could have been a few years old and it was probably not really tight as it should have been. But having said that, it does show you that really good recovery points are terribly important. So you might have all the good recovery gear, but you need the things to hook it onto. Now the other thing is utilising your winch smartly. If you find the thing's getting hot, stop winching. If the cable's getting bunched up in the corner, stop winching before it gets all mangled up and catches and things. If the winch doesn't work properly, it's getting hot, stop winching. And if the winch is going, that's a bad sign. It's telling you to stop, give it a rest, let the voltage come back up in the batteries. When you're winching winch to winch, one of the important things you've got to remember is a winch is not to be used as a tow rope. However, winching hook to hook, if both winches are actually winching at the same time, it makes the recovery twice as fast and it's quite a valid thing to do. One of the things I've seen done, which is absolutely disastrous, is people running their winch cable out and then using it as a dirty great big long tow rope or even putting a snatch strap onto it. That actually puts a shock load back into the winch brake and into the gears and into the motor and can absolutely destroy your winch. If the winch is fairly slow and you've got a car with very high first gear ratios, it makes it extremely difficult to match the speed of your car to the speed of the winch. If you have an automatic transmission, it makes it much, much, much easier. And if you have really, really low gearing, like in the Toyotas, it makes it much easier also. Because you've got a couple of things to think about here. You want to have the engine RPM appropriate so the alternator is actually charging properly. So you're looking at an RPM that's typically going to be about 12 to 1400 RPM minimum to get your excitation of the alternator working properly. That gives you full power to your winch. And you want your wheels turning at a speed so you don't keep catching up. If you do catch up, then what happens is the cable goes soft. The cable then goes hard again when you catch up and it locks the cable back onto itself which means that when you go to release your cable backwards becomes forward because it's all caught up and that's a real problem. We've had that happen a few times today. So again, matching speed very, very important. Now different winches naturally have different speeds and typically some of the low mount winches are very, very slow. Typically high mount winches are quicker but not all low mounts are slow. Some of them are actually very, very fast. In fact, some of the low mounts even have two speeds appropriate to them, which means you can actually make it very easy to match your speed. So when you do gain traction, you don't run over your cable, which is very important. So guys, it's been a big learning exercise and hope you'll learn things from this. Thank you. On a recent day out, I grabbed two mates, a stock Triton, and two sets of traction boards to see just how well this Aussie recovery device would work. We headed to a mate's farm in central Victoria, where I knew a small but soft based creek would be a good starting point. We had no drama getting the stock Forby stuck hard and with little ground clearance, highway tyres, the Triton had no chance. So we got to work with our red and green 1100mm treads, firstly clearing away some of the river rocks we were bellied out on and then setting up the boards ready for a speedy extraction.
With the added traction and a stable platform to drive on, we had no problems getting the vehicle safely out of trouble. And the next step was to see how well Tread would act as a precautionary device across the same creek. Bridging the soft bed, ramping into the stepped up bank and offering plenty of traction, our tread boards made for a hassle free, easy crossing and even got us back out with ease. With the running creek, clean up was a breeze and the lightweight boards were stacked and packed ready for the trip home. I just wonder where we'll get stuck next. In between episodes of your favourite TV show, visit 4WheelDriveTV.com.au for the latest in 4x4 news, links, prizes and videos. Stay in touch with myself and Danny and receive regular updates, promos and photos via our Facebook page. And visit YouTube.com forward slash 4 Tube for our latest 4x4 videos. There's three great ways to stay up to date and in touch with our growing 4 Drive community in between episodes. Viewers, the wait is over. Shop online at the 4 Drive TV store for personalised merchandise, 4 Drive TV clothing, 4 Drive products and even DVD subscriptions. That's right, two episodes of 4 Drive TV posted out to you every fortnight for the whole series and all for just $50. Support your favourite program, wear the brand you love and never miss another episode with our collector's DVD subscriptions. Get shopping at 4DriveTV.com.au with the 4 Drive TV online store. The next generation of shock absorbers is here. Leading the way in 4x4 suspension development, Old Man Emu introduces the most advanced and finely tuned shock absorber on the market. Nitro Charger Sport incorporates a new valving system that instantly adapts to all terrain for an outstanding smooth ride and phenomenal control. Backed by a three-year, 60,000 kilometre warranty, you can trust Nitro Charger Sport, built in Australia for Australian conditions. G'day, my name's Carl and this is my rig. Actually it's my partner's rig. She's graciously allowed me to do a few mods on it. It's a 2001 Kia Sportage. Mods that I've done to it include manual hubs to replace the old vacuum lines, put a set of ATs on it, a nudge bar, some spotties, a UHF. She's got a lift as well, done all the bushes and so forth. Future mods which I'd like to do include a new exhaust system just to get a bit more poke out of her and some bigger rear shockers just to dampen the rear end a little bit. She's actually surprised me where I can take her. I've taken her up to the high country, I've taken her up to Talarook, Cobors, also around the Mount Macedon Wood Ends area. I also take her up to the Murray. Soon I'm going out with a group of fellas from work. We're heading up to Talarook for another day. Later in the year I'll be taking the family up to the high country, we'll be doing a bit of exploring up there and I'd also like to do the Una Data track. If you'd like to be the weekly Your Rig right here on 4 Drive TV then send an email to myself with Your Rig in the subject line. Each weekly winner takes home an electric blue span set snap strap, a complete you fix it windscreen repair kit, a DP chip stubby holder and Berrimer diesel cap, an ARB cap a packet of up and go courtesy of Sanitarium, ARB Penrith stubby holder, an emergency can of ARB Outback Survival Socks, an RFI stubby holder and an RFI cap, a HEMA Great Desert Tracks Atlas and Guide, an X17 Fiskars Synthetic Axe, 
A 9-11 memorial cap courtesy of 511 Tactical and ARB rechargeable LED adventure light. For ARB's latest new product, Forby the Soft Toy. The Travel Mate tyre pressure gauge. A set of smart scissors from our good friends at Keesler Knives. A magazine from Bowhunter, Wild Deer and Hunting Adventures and Dirt Comp. And it's all neatly packed up in an ARB cargo gear carry bag. I'd really like to thank Simon and Miranda and Four Wheel Drive TV for inviting me out today and having a great day out in the outdoors. Partner May and our beautiful little boy Aiden. And I'd really like to thank the sponsors for the fantastic prize pack. The exhaust temperature is another question people ask. Yes, we do fit parameters, but we don't normally push it because it gives people another thing to look at and worry all the time. In general, if the vehicle is set up correctly, driven correctly, and the fuel injection system is maintained properly, you should not have an exhaust temperature problem. You could say exhaust temperature 450, 550, depends on load, on temperature, on a multitude of factors. It might run to 650 degrees. It's fairly hot then, but some vehicles will run around that on load, of course. If you're running empty, you don't have that temperature. Often it's caused if the system has been set up wrongly. Poor air filters are starving of air, the fuel gets into it, they're running hot. Blocked exhaust, multitude of factors can change that parameter temperature <laughs> gauge and it goes high up and people worry, of course. The thing which we like is often on a vehicle is a boost gauge. Manufacturers don't fit boost gauges either but a boost gauge at least gives you an idea what the boost is on your turbocharger in your manifold and I find that a very good indication of the turbocharger operation and you can drive by that. You can pick the best spot on it. As you're driving you get the maximum boost which you can soon find and if you're backing off slightly you can see as the gauge starts to drop that's probably the best spot where the most power is. So that's probably the main things which we suggest. But again, if you go on to very hard trips on a weekend, the vehicle has to be maintained very, very well. One of the top competition series being held in Australia this year is WTC, Winch Truck Challenge. Run by a dedicated group of mid to north coast Queenslanders, this three round series offers a balanced format of production class and extreme challenges. As a top event, the rounds are well organised, well attended and fiercely competitive. That said, it's hard to find a friendlier bunch of blokes and the events are really all about having some responsible fun at an elite level. For round one this year, we sent my Italian mate Enrico up for the action and it wasn't long before the locals welcomed him with some Aussie humour. Oh, is that Ford Rock TV? Hey, hey mate, how are you going? <laughs> Good, thank you. Where are you from? Italy. Italy? Yes. What are you doing here? I'm filming for Simon Grace People Drive TV. Four-wheel drive TV. If you see this bloke around here, but you got to say good day to him, yeah? So what are, you, what are you doing here, mate? What are you filming? Me now? <laughs> are you filming? That's no good. The WTC Winch Truck Challenge brings a whole new level of 4x4 activity, challenge and competition to Central East Queensland and as such 4 wheel drive TV wholeheartedly supports both the organisers and competitors.
For anyone that wants more information on the ROPS WTC series for 2012, head to our website, which is www.wtc4x4.com.au, where you can find all the info you need on when the next event is going to be. We have all the rankings, where the guys came over the weekend, photos from the weekend and that sort of thing. So head to the website, very interactive and informative. This footage has been taken from round one this year. Round two was run out of Mackay and will be featured shortly on Forward Drive TV, but watch out for round three towards the end of October. Great camaraderie, plenty of action and tough tracks. We won't miss it. Really like to thank Full Drive TV again for coming out covering this event for us. Without the support of these guys, very hard to get coverage media wise. So thank you very much, Full Drive TV. Well, thank you for tuning in. We've got another great episode planned for you next week. But in between, jump onto the Four Wheel Drive TV website, send us a friend request on Facebook. We'd love to hear from you. And don't forget all of those amazing prizes. I'm Simon Christie. Tread lightly. Keep it safe. Play hard. I'll see you next week.